I mean, so chapter two, uh, let us look into that. And I believe that uh, already you have, uh, 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 I mean, gone through all those portions from the chapter two. No, uh, mainly uh, we uh, we see the messages to the four, ch I mean, four churches in chapter two. Now, when you go through chapter two, we can see mainly there is uh, there are many messages to the uh, to the churches, especially for the four churches in chapter two. Okay, the rest of the chapters, the three chapters, three messages are in chapter three. Okay, now we are looking to I mean we are looking into that chapter two now, and uh, uh, but before uh, we enter into the uh, elaborated uh, study of the messages of uh, uh, seven churches. Uh, let us look into uh, some of the special uh, features uh, which is related to the uh, seven churches. Okay, uh, some of the special uh, features that uh, I'm going to I mean tell you about the uh, uh, seven seven churches. I mean, so the first point is like this. I mean, you can write it down like this. The similar topics in all seven messages of the seven churches. The similar topics in all seven messages of seven churches. So I'll just, uh, I mean, uh, one by one, I will explain all those things. And then uh, it is it is very easy for you to, I mean, by that time you can, if you're writing, you can write it down. Then uh, by that time I will explain all those things. Now, you know, uh, there are when you when you go to chapter two, especially I told you that uh, mainly there are many messages for the seven churches in chapter two, uh, for the for, for four churches in I mean Asia Minor. So uh, you know when you go through that, we will understand that there are many similar topics uh, in all seven messages of the seven churches. Okay, the first one is to the angel, to the angel. So you can see it from. Uh, uh, the, 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 to the angel means to the minister, to the minister. You know, when you read uh, chapter two, verse one, it says to the angel of the church, to the angel of the church. And uh, uh, in uh, chapter three, verse 14, chapter three, verse 14 says, um, um, okay, uh, uh, to the angel of the church in Laodicea. Okay, so every, for every church, sorry, every church, every messages, you can see this usage that to the angel, to the angel. Okay, so that is the minister or the pastor or the bishop of the church. Okay, so that is a similar a topic that you can see in every messages. Okay, secondly, the second one is uh, the mentioning about Jesus Christ, mentioning about Jesus Christ. So uh, in, 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 in all the churches, the messages of the churches, you can see mentioning about Jesus Christ. For example, chapter two, verse one, and chapter three, verse one. This is one of the example from all the seven churches, okay? Only one example, and maybe two examples are giving from two chapters, two different chapters, okay? Now, the third one is, I know, I know. Okay. Uh, I know that. I mean, uh, you can you can see that uh, I, that usage. I know uh, in all the messages, especially chapter two, verse three, and chapter three, verse eight. Okay. The fourth one is appearance of Jesus in different ways. Appearance of Jesus in different ways. Uh, that you can see, uh, for example, in uh, chapter chapter two, verse one, and chapter two, verse twelve. And again, the fifth one is appreciations and good qualities and weakness and warnings. Okay, these all things are there for the messages in every churches. Appreciations are there, good qualities are recorded, weakness are mentioned, and there are some warnings also for seven churches. For example, chapter two, verse two, and chapter two, verses four and five. Again, the sixth one, the sixth similarity is the promise given for the church, the promise which is given for the church. For example, chapter two, verse seven and chapter two, verse 28. So there are some promises given to each churches, but it is not same. The promises are different, 
but it is given for the seven churches. The seventh similarity is, it is written in every messages that he who has an ear, let him hear. He who has an ear, let him hear. So that usage is there, is, is mentioned in all the seven church messages. For example, chapter two, verse seven, and chapter three, verse 22. Chapter two, verse seven, and chapter three, three verse 22. Okay, this is very clear. So these are the, uh, some of the similarities, maybe seven similarities, which we can see in different seven churches and their messages. Now, we will come to the next point, that is three things about each church. Three things about each church. Uh, that means, you know, mainly we will be focusing on three topics about each church. Main topics, okay. Um, there are many things written about each churches, but at the same time, we will be discussing mainly three topics from each church. Three topics from each church. The first topic will be the city where the church is located. The city where the church is located. Secondly, the establishment of the church. The establishment of the church. And thirdly, the message to the church. The message to the church. Okay, the reason that I am just mentioning all these things, that when you get all these I mean, details, then it is very easy for you to understand what is there in the chapter two and three. Okay, so this is the reason that I'm going through these, I mean, details and everything. So mainly we'll be focusing uh, about every churches that uh, the city where the I mean, church is located, the establishment of the church and the messages to the church. Okay, so uh, remember uh, one more thing, when we go through the messages of the churches, because there are fourfold applications. There are fourfold applications about every church and every message. Fourfold applications are there. So it is very easy when you are when you are writing down, then it is very easy for you to understand. Okay, there is no there is no need of any doubt of those things. Uh, the fourfold applications are there. The first one is the local application. The local application. That means there are seven local churches mentioned in these chapters two and three. And seven local churches must apply these messages. You know, Apostle John was receiving the visions from God and he was just delivering to the people. That means in those days there were Apostle uh, John or God was selecting only seven churches, seven local churches. There were many churches in, in Asia Minor and that the in different places. At the same time, God chose only seven churches. So those churches were supposed to apply these messages, okay? So this is a local application for those seven churches in Asia Minor. The secondly, the second application is universal or ecclesiastical application. Universal or ecclesiastical application, which means the all churches, the all churches all over the world, the all churches all over the world, and even including our church, Eternal Life Church of God, also is included in that universal and ecclesiastical application. And our church also, and our church believers also are supposed to read those messages and we have many things to adopt. We have many things to apply in our day-to-day -day life. Amen. So that is universal or ecclesiastical. The word ecclesiastical means uh, uh, the, the, the ecclesia is the Greek word for church. Ecclesia is the Greek word for church. That means universal church. That means ecclesiastical application. That's the meaning of that. 
okay so uh, the, the third application is uh, a profitical application profitical application so what do you mean by the profitical application the profitical application means the prophecy is about the things from the time of john till the time of eternity okay when you go through uh, those seven church messages you will understand there are many prophecies not only the seven church messages but also from chapter 4 till chapter 22 there are many 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 prophecies written about the future things okay the present things also and the future things also so the prophecy is about the things from the time of john the prophecy is about the things from the time of john you know but john was receiving that those messages so the the, the messages and the 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 things that written about the prophecy from the time of apostle john till the time of eternity till the time of eternity that is applicable okay that the prophetical things are applicable for every church and fourth one the fourth application is personal application personal application which means each person must receive the voice of god when we go through the seven messages each person must receive something as a as a voice of god when we go through the seven messages of the seven churches i mean so these are the four fold applications the first one is local application <clears throat> that was only for those churches seven churches universal and ecclesiastical application for all the church all over the world and the third one is prophetical applications mean the prophecies about the things from the time of john till the time of eternity and the fourth application is personal application that means each person must receive the voice of god so this evening as we are going through chapter 2 and the other chapters i mean i personally believe that heavenly god the almighty god is going to speak to every person to every person each person and god will prepare us and god will transform us and god will encourage every one of us uh, to 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 be to be ready for the second coming of jesus christ amen so this is the purpose of god this is the four fold applications of uh, the messages that we see in chapter 2 now we as we as we start studying about uh, uh, the seven churches and their messages i remember one thing that i that i told you in the in the previous class itself that the christian church is very much important for the lord the christian church is very much important for the lord and jesus is coming back to receive the church as his bride jesus christ is coming back to receive the church as his bride so that's the reason i told you already that the christian church the new testament church is always very 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 important for lord jesus christ you know jesus christ is living now to get the church to get his bride amen so jesus christ is preparing and jesus christ sent the holy spirit also to prepare the people of god in this world and jesus is saying that i will come back to receive the bride with me to receive the church with me i need the church because the church is my bride that's what jesus says okay so we are important in the sight of god the new testament church is important every believer is important in the sight of god so before the wedding you know before the wedding or before receiving the bride or before uh, uh, getting getting into a marriage or wedding Jesus is coming to every local church for a total evaluation and inspection to make them perfect to make them perfect in the sight of God you got that point before the wedding or so i told you that Jesus is the bridegroom and the church is the bride according to the biblical biblical standard okay so before his wedding 
Jesus, or uh, before he is receiving the bride, Jesus is coming to every local churches. That's what we see in chapter 2. That Jesus is visiting or Jesus is doing an evaluation and instruction in every local church. The purpose of that visiting is to, to make perfect, to make perfect every church, every believer in the sight of God. Amen. That kind of inspection and evaluation and the result of the evaluation also is mentioned in chapter 2. Okay, so for example, if we are going through a test, if we have an examination or we, we, have, a, we have a test, we will be after the test and we will be waiting for the result. We will be waiting for the report. Okay, report. Okay, you, you appear the examination and you are waiting for the result. Now, the examiner is Jesus Christ. And already Jesus Christ gave us an exam that a, your Christian life is itself is an exam. Your Christian life is itself is an exam. And we are writing the exam. And while writing or after, the, after writing the examination, Jesus is coming there and asking you that what is your present situation? You are a believer. You are a Christian. And you, I mean, uh, accept Jesus as your personal savior. And what is your present situation? How are you living now? What is the spiritual situation? So this is what, you know, even though we are, I mean, uh, we are in a, in a Bible study, I would like to encourage you that God need to speak to every person this evening that when God is evaluating a person, when God is inspecting a person, it is not easy to lead a Christian life in this world. We have to be very keen and we have to be very, very careful about our Christian life. So we have to become a perfect person before the coming of Jesus Christ. So this evening also and the coming days also as Jesus is visiting our church, our local church. And when Jesus is doing some inspection in our personal life, when Jesus is doing some evaluation in our personal life, Amen. Let us say the Lord, we are yielding also with the mighty hand of God. You can come inside our church. You can come into my personal life and you can do anything and you can give your word towards me that I am ready to, I mean, uh, ready to be transformed and I'm ready to be changed in every areas and every problems of my personal life. Amen. So that is what we understand from this portion that Jesus Christ is coming for an evaluation and inspection, especially about the seven churches in Asia Minor. Now, we are going to the chapter two, uh, verses one through seven, the first church, the first church is the church at Ephesus, the church at Ephesus, the church at Ephesus. So, uh, uh, okay, yeah, uh, later we will be uh, reading that portion. Now, you know, I told you that uh, uh, already uh, in, the, in, the, in the beginning of this class that uh, uh, we will be discussing mainly uh, four things, mainly uh, four things about each church, which was that? Okay, sorry, three things about each church. What was that? The city where the church is located. The city where the church is located. Secondly, the establishment of the church. That means how the church was established in that place. How, for example, how the church at Ephesus was established. By whom it was established. Thirdly, the message to the church. These three things will be there. So we'll be focusing these three things about each church. Now, we are moving into the first church mentioned in chapter 2. That is from chapter 2 verses 1 through 7. Okay. So the first point, the first point that we are going to discuss is the city where the church is located. The city where the church is located. You know, the reason why I'm giving all these details, okay, there is a reason, there is a, there is a purpose when I'm giving all these, re I mean, details, I mean, 
some of you may be thinking that okay pastor are you are taking the bible study of this uh, of uh, book of revelation and why you are giving all these historical things and uh, uh, why you are uh, i mean teaching us all those things okay it is very easy to understand you know when you when, when you are, when you are knowing something about the history of the ephesus city for example ephesus city the city of ephesus if you know the history of the ephesus city and uh, when you learn something uh, uh, about uh, the condition of those days the conditions and the situations of those days okay and the events which was happening in, in those days it is it is very easy to i mean see why it comes first in the list of the seven churches for example the the, the church at ephesus is coming in the list of the seven churches the first is the church at ephesus right so you will understand what is the reason that god is placing the church at ephesus in the in the in the first place of his seven churches okay there are many reasons there are many reasons when you know about the city where the church at ephesus is located then you will understand what is the meaning of including the first church in in first place the church at ephesus okay so now uh, you will get one uh, a, a picture about the ancient city of ephesus the ancient city of ephesus okay before we go into the messages for the church we have to understand what was the situation of that city what was the situation of that city where the church at ephesus was placed or where the church at ephesus was established okay so this is the picture that you can see there uh, this is the ancient city of ephesus ancient city of ephesus okay now there are some some more things about uh, the city of ephesus we are going to think about all those things okay there are many things written about the uh, there are the, the history says there are many things uh, spe many specialities are there about the city the city of ephesus okay uh, the, the the other point one the point is in in the time of john in the time of john ephesus was the greatest harbor in asia ephesus was the greatest harbor in asia that means it was the business center in ephesus okay ephesus was the business center you know that means you know it, uh, the reason that you know it was a harbor in asia it was a harbor in asia greatest harbor in asia so because of that because of that many people from from many countries they reached there for the business purpose business purpose so the ephesus the the, the city of ephesus was famous and many were coming because it was a harbor it was a it was a greatest harbor okay so for the business purpose there were many people many emperors and many i mean leaders and political leaders and all business people they came to this ephesus city of ephesus for their business i mean uh, purpose next one is ephesus was the gateway of asia ephesus was the gateway of asia that means <clears throat> to enter into asia this was the gateway ephesus okay from ephesus they were entering into asia minor for example you know uh, you can see the gateway of india is in mumbai mumbai okay so that, that, that the same thing is happening here also if somebody want to i mean enter into asia minor then they will be going to ephesus okay that is that is the situation okay so that is speciality the next speciality of ephesus okay the, the the next one is ephesus was the highly i mean sorry highway to rome ephesus was ephesus was the highway to rome highway to rome for example uh, ignatius ignatius the the roman emperor ignatius the roman emperor uh, uh, he was calling ephesus as the highway of the christian martyrs the highway of the christian martyrs the reason that he was calling uh, the, the 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 ephesus as the uh, highway of the christian martyrs is there were many people there were many christians were 
becoming martyrs and there were many Christians uh, were brought into that place of Ephesus and many were killed and many were persecuted. Many people were I mean, tortured in that I mean, city of Ephesus. So that is the reason, you know, the, the Emperor Ignatius, Roman Emperor Ignatius, he was saying that the Ephesus is the highway of the Christian martyrs. Many people were I mean, brought into that place and they were killed and they were persecuted and they were tortured. So that was the one reason he called that place, the, the city of Ephesus, as a highway of the Christian martyrs. The next importance, the next uh, uh, future is the important political distinctions. Important political distinctions. And you can call it as a free city. The Ephesus was a free city. That means Politically, there were many influences, political distinctions and political influences. Every person, every political parties were uh, able to reach to that place. It was very free city, and even 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 uh, it was not under any 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 other countries. Ephesus was not under any countries. You know, you can call it as a. Uh, it was it was run by or it was controlled by itself. Okay, that city was controlled by itself, and uh, nobody was, I mean, uh, having any authority over that city of Ephesus. Okay, the next, uh, I mean, importance and next uh, uh, future is uh, it was it was a city which was famous for the games in Asia. Many many games were happening uh, in Asia. Okay, this was the place. This was the place because they had an auditorium, or you can call it as a. As a, as a theater also, okay? So uh, they were uh, having uh, uh, many games in, in, in Ephesus in Asia, okay? The next point is the famous stadium in Ephesus. There was a famous stadium in Ephesus, okay? These all things will come together when we study about the church at Ephesus, okay? Now, uh, another main and important thing, the important uh, point you can think about is Ephesus, the city of, city of Ephesus was the center of Artemis. The center of Artemis or center of Diana worship. Diana worship, you know, Diana is a, is a, is a pagan and Greek uh, uh, goddesses. So both are same. Artemis and Diana is same. So it was a center. The, the city of Ephesus was a center of Artemis or Diana worship. Especially the temple of Artemis, the temple of Artemis goddesses was one of the seven wonders of ancient world. Okay. The, the temple of Artemis was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. You will get the temple of Artemis now. The picture of the, yes, picture of uh, temple of Artemis. Okay. This was the temple of Artemis. So it was very important. In that place, you know, in the in the in the in the city of Ephesus, uh, this temple was there, and uh, there were many things were happening in that temple. And this temple was a famous temple, and it was the uh, one of the seven wonders of ancient world. This is the I mean temple of Artemis and all this. And the, the next speciality is um, uh, the 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 uh, it was the, the 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 Ephesus, the city of Ephesus, was a notorious center of pagan worship and center of all evil. The notorious center of pagan worship and center of all evil, all evil. Remember one thing, this is the place that the church, uh, the, the, the Christian church was growing in that place, okay? So we have to understand what is the situation of that city when they were placing or establishing the church in that city, okay? So this was the notorious center of pagan worship and center of all evil. The next speciality is it was a center of idol worship and witchcraft. It was a center of idol worship and witchcraft. This one, it is not taken from the history, but it is there in book of Ephesians and Corinthians. Okay, so there are some mentioning about uh, in book of Ephesians and Corinthians uh, regarding the city of Ephesus. Okay, so this place, this city was full of idol worship and witchcrafts. Okay. Okay. Then next one is the 
uh, the, the, the Ephesus was a center of immoral practice. This was a center of immoral practices. There are many, many, many explanations that I can give about this city, but I would like to give you some of the explanations and details of uh, the, the city of Ephesus in this I mean, class. And uh, the next one is, there was a famous library in Ephesus. There is a famous library in Ephesus. You can see that library in, in, in the screen. This is the kind of ruin, and this is the kind of, uh, you know, it, it was destroyed, and now it is in, 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 in this situation. So there are, it, is, it is known as the uh, Celsus, okay, Celsus Library. Celsus Library, that was the famous library in those days, in the time of, during the time of Apostle John, when he was writing this letters in it. So the other thing, the other thing is there was a famous theater. There was a famous theater that is known as the Audien Theater. Audien Theater, which was capable of holding more than 25,000 people. You can see that picture also in the screen that this is the theater. Or you can call it as an old, uh, old, what, is, what is a stadium also. Now, this was the place, open stadium or open theater, and almost 25,000 people can gather in that place. Okay, that is the speciality of that area and that city, city of Ephesus. That's all about the, the city of Ephesus. Okay, so what the reason that, you know, uh, when I was giving these details about uh, 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 what is the speciality of the city of Ephesus. You have to think about one thing. It's a, it's a great thing that the church was growing in that place, even in the midst of all these evil things, even in the midst of all these evil things. You know, there were many people doing evil things and uh, uh, idol worship and pagan worship and, and all immoral practices and evil things and everything. You know, there are many things that the, the city people can boast about at the same time, at the same time, uh, the church of God, the church of God means the church at Ephesus. Okay, the Christian church at Ephesus was growing in a, in a tremendous way because of the power of the Holy Spirit and because of the power of Jesus Christ. Okay, so this is very amazing thing that we have to think about. I mean, when we think about uh, the specialities of the city of Ephesus. Amen. So now we will move into the second point, point number B, that is the establishment of the church at Ephesus. The establishment of the church at Ephesus. <clears throat> I told you already, when we study about uh, each church, we will be focusing on three things. The first one is, the first one is, what is that? We will be discussing about the city, the city, the speciality of the city where the church is established. And the second one is this one. What is that? The establishment of the church at Ephesus. The F establishment of the church. That means who established that church and who are the people uh, and the leaders, those who were uh, toiling there and the people, those who were working there, the people, those who were ministering in that place and who founded the church and who established those churches. No. When you read Acts chapter 18, verses uh, uh, 24 and 25, Acts chapter 18, verses 24 and 25. I'll read it for you. Uh, it says, now a Jew named Apollos, an Alexandrian by birth, an eloquent man, came to Ephesus, and he was mighty in the scriptures. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in spirit. He was speaking and teaching accurately the things concerning Jesus being acquainted only with the baptism of John. I was reading only two verses from Acts chapter 8, 
uh, sorry, 18, 18, okay? So these verses says that Apollos was teaching about Jesus in Ephesus. Apollos was teaching about Jesus in Ephesus. This is the history, the biblical history we are getting from Bible. Okay. Then after that, you know, in the in the following verses, when you read maybe uh, chapters 19 and 20, you will get more explanation about how the church at Ephesus was established and how it was formed. Then, you know, then after, after him, after Apollos, Acula came and Priscilla came and they were preaching there in different places in Ephesus, city of Ephesus. It was not easy for them to preach the gospel in Ephesus because I already told you that that area, that city was filled with witchcraft and all those evil things and evil practices and idol worship and all those things. Okay. So, but Apollos came and then Acula came, then Priscilla came and they were all preaching in that Ephesus. Okay, then after that, what happened? Paul came there and he stayed a longer time in Ephesus than in any other cities. Paul, okay, next person is Paul. He came into that city and, uh, and he was staying there a longer time. That means three years. He has been staying there for three years and he made an extended Bible study in Ephesus. He made an extended Bible study in the Ephesus for three years. Okay, when I'm thinking about uh, the, the, the Bible school of Apostle Paul in the city of Ephesus, I would like to tell one personal experience of our ministry. And in India, the, the main um, what is that insight and uh, vision that God has given us when we were working and ministering in India, it was like uh, uh, go to some places and uh, uh, conduct a Bible study there. Okay, whenever we are going somewhere, you know, if, even though we are going for a for a church ministry, we used to conduct uh, uh, a, a Bible study in one house or, uh, or different houses. Okay, through that Bible study, uh, when, uh, what is that again? First time. Uh, only few people will be there. Maybe that family only will be there. But later, many more people also will be coming and attending for that Bible study in that house. The neighbors, the neighbors. Okay, so they will they will be, they are not all the, all the Malayali people or somebody, but they are from different languages. Okay, maybe uh, Tamil language and Kannada language and Hindi people are there and Malayalam people are there and Telugu people are there, all those people. Okay. So they will come to that house and when we conduct this Bible study in that house, these people also will join there and we will pray for them. We will teach them what the Bible says about, I mean, the Christian life and everything. So they will be coming and attending in our Sunday service and they will become, they will take the baptism and they will become the member of that church. So that was the, that was the practice that we were doing in India. Okay, so when I was reading about uh, Apostle Paul, how he was spreading the gospel and how he was trying to, uh, uh, to, to preach and teach the Bible, he was using that mother, the same mother. You know, he was conducting some Bible study programs. That means, you know, in, in, in this verse, you know, uh, when we will go to Acts chapter uh, 20, verse 31. Acts chapter 20, verse 31 says like this, Therefore, be on the alert, remembering that night and day for a period of three years, I did not cease to admonish each one with tears. So with tears, he was teaching the word of God. With tears. It means what? You know, if when, if when, when a person is having, when a person is having that enthusiasm, when a person is having that burden, then only only the person who is having the burden can preach or teach the Bible in that way. You know, in Malayalam it says like this, Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it's a great privilege for our church people and other people also that getting 
this opportunity to gather together and study the word of god study the word of god when you when you know the word of god we will be standing firm for the faith amen so that's what we understand so apostle paul sorry paul he came to that i mean city and he was preaching the gospel and he was conducting an extended bible study for 3 years and he established the church at ephesus he established the church at ephesus that's what we read in the in the in the in the coming i mean uh, in the upcoming uh, chapters okay then then what happened paul went to jerusalem paul went to jerusalem okay that is there in uh, in chapter chapter 19 of uh, of uh, uh, yeah chapter 19 of uh, apostle uh, sorry acts of apostles okay so you know paul after this paul went to jerusalem uh, then the history says then the history says john came there and he became the minister of ephesus church john came there and he became the minister of ephesus church and during that time that when Uh, apostle john was ministering in ephesus that was the time that he was banished to island of patmos he was banished to island of patmos and from there only he is writing these letters and he was rece- receiving the visions about jesus christ and also about the future things what is going to happen in the in the coming days in the, in the future years okay then you know the 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 important thing that you have to understand from this portion is through these three years of bible study there came a revival there was a revival through this bible study okay so when he was teaching the bible in that city of ephesus okay there came a there came a revival and many people were added into the church many people were added into the church to to follow the the reality to follow the the truth of the gospel to follow the truth of the gospel so it was from ephesus it says that it was from ephesus that many missionaries were i mean going to establish the churches in other places of asia minor from from ephesus it started okay first the the church at ephesus is i mean established then from there many missionaries went to many places in asia minor and they were establishing many churches in many places hallelujah so this is what we understand how the church at ephesus was established okay so because of these reasons that specialities of the city of ephesus you know it was not easy to establish a church in that city and maintain a christian worship among those evil doers you know when we we think it's that you know it is not easy for for any one of us to establish a church in this city no even if we, if we try but by the grace of god god helped those people and god was with them and they were encouraged to do that okay so the because of these reasons you know because of these specialities of the city of ephesus you know, it was not easy at all uh, to establish a church in that city but now uh, when you go to revelation chapter 2 verse 1 Revelation chapter two, uh, verse one. We will, we will, we will, we will start from there. Okay. So, uh, Revelation chapter two, verse oh, sorry. Uh, what it says like this: To the angel of the church in Ephesus, write the one who holds the seven stars in high right, uh, his right hand. and one who walks among the seven golden lamps stand says this okay so we are going to that verse 1 chapter 2 verse 1 here we see john is addressing this letter to the angel of the church is that right he is addressing this letter to the angel of the church to the angel of the church to the angel of the church means the pastor or the bishop or the minister of that local church the pastor or the bishop or the minister of the local church he is known as the angel of the church in in this verse the angel of the church okay that means the the reason that uh, the the uh, the the mentioning about the when pastor or the bishop as an angel is these people the pastors or the ministers or the bishops are receiving the messages from 
God and they are, I mean, they are the messengers and responsible people of the church. They are the messengers. Okay? What's the duty of an angel? What's the duty of an angel? Receiving some messages from God and hand over, hand over to the people. Okay, the same thing is happening with the, with the bishop or the pastor, that the pastor is receiving the messages from God and he is just hand overing and he is giving the messages to the people in the church. So they are the responsible people. So that's the reason here, Apostle John is writing and addressing to the angel of the church. That means he is addressing to the pastor or the bishop or the leader or the minister of the law of the church. In his name, he is writing this letter it's, it's just like an a, a, like a like a covering letter. It's a covering letter. Okay, so uh, he is giving the messages to every church, and at the same time, there's a covering letter that this letter is for Ephesus church. This letter is Pergamum church and all those things. Okay, now so now, so when the pastor is receiving this letter, it is his responsibility to encourage the people, reading and explaining. Okay, and the, the pastor or the leader or the bishop is having an insight about uh, the, the things which is going to happen and uh, uh, the, the, the clear picture about uh, the church and the church people. So that is the reason that this letter is addressed to the pastor of the church. And that pastor is supposed to read this and that pastor is to, I mean, I mean encourage those people that even in we are in the midst of the persecution, there is nothing to worry about because Jesus is alive and Jesus is living and he is, he is helping every one of us and he's supporting every one of us. Amen. So, and this letter is not only for the minister, but also for the believers. Amen. So, I mean, uh, the North thing that okay, it is written there, the letter is addressed only the angel of the church or the, or the minister of the church. Doesn't mean that that letter is only for the minister of the church, but that letter is to be readable for all the people those who are in the church amen and in the same verse same verse that means chapter 2 verse 1 i mean uh, it says that jesus in his right hand holding the seven stars jesus in his right hand holding the seven stars okay who all are these seven stars mentioned in chapter 2 verse 1 the ministers are the hand the, the, the ministers, okay? So uh, he is holding the seven stars means seven stars are the ministers, seven ministers and eh? God and they have the reward in heaven, okay? The ministers have the reward in heaven. That's what we read in Daniel chapter 12, verse three. Daniel chapter 12, verse three, okay? okay. Daniel chapter 12, verse three says, those who are wise will shine as bright as the sky. And those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever. You know that verse? You know, I said, the seven stars that Jesus is holding in his right hand is the seven ministers of the church. Not only it is talking about the seven ministers, but it is talking about all the ministers, all the people, those who are involved in their ministry, and all those people, those who are bringing many people to the righteousness, from the darkness to the light. There are many people, I mean, doing this ministry in their Christian life that they are trying to bring many people into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Okay, so those people are called by, and God, Jesus is holding all of them. And God, Jesus is I mean, carrying all of them in his right hand with the authority, with the power that they are the people like stars. That's the reason here it is written, he's holding the seven stars. That means in Daniel chapter 12 verse 3, it says that those who lead many to righteousness will be shining like the stars forever and they will get a reward, absolutely a, a wonderful reward when they are reaching in heaven, amen? And the same words, I mean, uh, 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 in, in the same words, chapter, chapter two, verse one says, I mean, Jesus is walking among the seven golden lampstands, right? I mean, he is, I mean, walking. The one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and the one who walks among the seven golden lampstands. 
walking among the seven golden lampstands. It shows the presence of Jesus is there in the church and also his eyes are always watching over the people of God. Amen. The presence of God is there. The presence of Jesus is there in the midst of the church. In the midst of the church. And his eyes are always watching over the people of God. How many of you think and how many of you believe that whenever we gather together in the presence of God to worship God, not only gathering together, even at your home, even in your personal life, okay, there is a, there is a, there is a, there is an eye of God. Okay, so the presence of Jesus is there, and He is always walking among us. So He is watching over us. Okay, we are the people of God, and Jesus is watching over us. And Jesus' presence is there, and He is when nothing is hidden in the sight of God. He cannot hide anything from the presence of God and sight of God because everything is open in the sight of God. Let us praise God for his presence. Hallelujah. Let us praise God for his I mean, amazing presence in our midst even in this evening also. Hallelujah. Because we are sitting in the presence of God. Amen. I know that you are sitting in your home, but we have the presence of God in our midst. We have to be respect. We have to respect the presence of God in our midst this evening. Amen. So the, the third one, the C point, point number C. Point number C is uh, the messages to the church at Ephesus. The messages to the church at Ephesus. The messages to the church at Ephesus. Okay, when we go to the messages for the churches, when we go to the messages for the churches, we have to think about three things are there, mainly three things are there. There are appreciations, and there are warnings, and there are weak points and solutions. There are appreciations, there are warnings, and there are weak points and solutions. We'll be looking into all of those points. Now we are coming to the Appreciations. See, appreciations. Okay. The appreciation for each church. And we will be reading from chapters, chapter 2, verses 2, 3, and 6. These three verses are talking about what is the appreciation for the church at Ephesus. But now we will read that whole portion, maybe chapter 2. Verses 1 through 7. Any one of you can read that portion. And uh, everybody can listen to that portion. Then uh, we will go through that. Okay. One person can read loudly that portion. Chapter 2 verses 1 through 7. It speaks about the message for the church at Ephesus. The others can listen very carefully that message. Who is reading? Revelation chapter 2 was um, 2 on the pastor. Chapter 1 to 7. Chapter, sorry, chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Yeah. The whole the point. angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things say he holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tasted, you have tested those who say that they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have preserved, sorry, persevered and have, have patience and have labored for my namesake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works. Or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. For this you have, 
that you hate the deeds of Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Amen. Praise God. So uh, we do not have uh, uh, much time for explaining all those things, but today, if possible, we will go through only one point from this portion. Okay, the appreciations, the appreciations. So the appreciation for the church at Ephesus is written in chapter two, verses two, three, and six. Okay, chapter two, three, chapter two, verses three, two, three, and six. Okay. The first point, which is mentioned there, is I know your deeds and toil or the labor. I know your deeds and toil or labor. That is in verse 2. Verse 2. It says, I know your deeds and your toil and your perseverance and that you cannot tolerate evil men. And you put to the test those who call themselves apostles and they are not, and you found them to be false. Now, we are coming to the first appreciation. Now, this is, this is a speciality of uh, God, that God is not always giving the warning or uh, uh, showing the mistakes and everything. But before that, before showing all those big points, he is saying that, okay, I have something to appreciate you. I appreciate you. Okay, so uh, God is appreciating the church at Ephesus. The first one is, I know. There are many things written about, I know, I know, I know. Remember one thing, God knows every person, God knows every church, and God knows every deed and every labor of a church and a believer. I mean, the, 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 the thing which is written here as a deed and choice or deed and labor is the good works and the hard work. The good works and the hard work is known as the as the toil or the deed. Okay, you know they were uh, uh, they, the, the the believers of uh, uh, church at Ephesus. They were not only the believers, just the believers, but they were the doers of the word of God and the doers of what they were believing. Okay, today there are many people they believe many things, but they are not ready to do that. Okay, for example, we, we believe many things. Okay, we believe the Bible. Especially, we believe the New Testament. There are many things, many things written in New Testament. And we believe that. We believe that. Okay, we believe that, okay, this is right, this is true, this is right, this is right. We know that it is written by God. This is good, and this is good, and we have to obey that. But most of the time, we are not able to do that. We are not practicing that. We can say in that way. We are not practicing that. But the church at Ephesus, they were doing the good work and they were doing the hard work. You know, these hard working people, they were hard working people. But, you know, Paul was the example for those believers in Ephesus. Paul was the example for those people, Apostle Paul. You know, uh, uh, you know uh, what we read about uh, in about uh, Apostle Paul in in First Corinthians chapter fifteen, First uh, uh, Corinthians chapter fifteen verse uh, 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 ten. Corinthians chapter fifteen verse ten, it says like this: By but by the grace of God I am what I am, and His grace toward me did not prove vain, but I labored even more than all of them. Yet not, but grace of God with me. I labored even more than all of them. That means Paul, who was he? He was a hard worker. Paul was the hard worker. Okay? So uh, um, that means, you know, this verse says that, okay, Paul says, I work harder than all of them. That means he was a ten maker. He was a ten maker. Same time, what, he did, what did he do? He was writing many books. He was writing many books. He was hard working. And uh, he was teaching the word of God, the people of God. And he was preaching the word. And he was involved in different kinds of ministry. 
this this is what we understand from the life of paul of course paul was a hard worker i mean he said i work hard more than anybody okay i mean he was a hard worker okay that means you know these people that the church at ephesus they were taking the example from apostle paul and he was i mean he was a tent maker he had a job and he was doing that job at the same time he was writing and he was writing many books and he was teaching the people and he was preaching among the people even among the unbelievers and unreached people and everything and he was involved in different kinds of ministry i mean this is possible you know every person every person of our church must take a decision this evening that i will work hard for the kingdom of god i mean we can do something we can do something we have the ability and we have all the possibility to do something whatever it may be i mean whatever god is interesting upon you you can do it you can do it for the glory of god not for the fame of a person i mean do not do anything do not do anything for your own fame i mean i you know oh, of course i i believe that you know whatever i do i i i used to pray like this oh lord let not come to the uh, let the glory come to me but let the glory go to god men let everything happen for the glory of god they were working hard apostle paul was working hard the people of church at ephesus they were working hard for the name of the lord not for themselves men so these people also had the same enthusiasm and they were working hard for his kingdom hallelujah so this is what the the, the first point we are understanding from this point that god is appreciating his people god is appreciating these people that they were they were hard workers and they were i mean god is i'm saying that i know your deeds and your labor and your toil i mean you were working everything for the kingdom of god i mean so the next point will be we will be discussing in the next class that is i know your servants or the passions okay so we'll be uh, i mean uh, uh, thinking about all those things in the later class the, the next class and uh, let us all Uh, close our eyes in the presence of God. If anybody is having any quick question or quick, I mean, any any doubt or something, you can quickly ask that question and we will clarify.